hello so i wanted to do a little collection of videos on just some of my collections it's not anything i'm doing for like bragging or because i necessarily feel like i've got some sort of huge collection to show off or anything like that it's just stuff that i mean i don't really collect many things just things that really really mean something to me and i'm not a completist either like i only collect things because i particularly like it or it's got some kind of sentimental reason or things like that and I just wanted to share it. I felt like maybe it'd be a good way of sort of getting to know me a bit better because like I say these things are special to me. So I wanted to start with my Wicked collection which I thought was quite small. <laughs> I'm looking at it all in front of me and I've got more than I realised I did. I'm in a spinny chair as well by the way. I'm sorry if it gets really annoying but I can't help but it moves when I move and it's creaky as well but it's the only chair I've got so I'm gonna have to deal with it. I'm gonna start with my Wicked collection. There are a couple of Wizard of Oz things thrown in as well because obviously like it's relevant. If you're not aware Wicked is like a sequel to the Wizard of Oz. It mostly focuses on the Wizard of Oz movie but obviously the Wizard of Oz is a book as well. I'm a huge fan of Wicked and the Wizard of Oz. To be honest I do like the Wizard of Oz because of Wicked so I sort of see The Wizard of Oz through the lens of Wicked even though I know they don't completely match up and it really pisses some people off but I just really love Wicked. It came into my life when I really really needed it and it just has a lot of personal relevance for me and so that's sort of why I really like the musical. So I thought I would start with the books as that's obviously where all of it started. I may as well start with my Wizard of Oz book which I think this is a Barnes and Noble edition. It's the first five books by L. Frank Baum. I think, I'm not an expert on the Wizard of Oz but I think there's like 20 that were written by L. Frank Baum and then there are like subsequent ones that have other writers as well. It's like a really long ongoing series. I really love the Wizard of Oz because when I started getting into Wicked I knew the movie The Wizard of Oz of course but I'd never read The Wizard of Oz and I wanted to to kind of get a deeper understanding of what was happening in Wicked. I used to be a real bookworm when I was growing up and then I just went through a spate of feeling really kind of depressed and uninspired and then I read The Wizard of Oz and it just I don't know, it clicked something in me and that's sort of how I feel about Wicked as well. It just really sparked my creativity. I like read it in one sitting, which isn't hard. It's like a hundred pages or something. I probably like the book of The Wizard of Oz more than the Judy Garland movie, to be quite honest. I know that's sort of a bit controversial, but I really love the movie Return to Oz as well. I feel like that's really underrated. I do like the movie version of The Wizard of Oz, but yeah, I prefer the book, definitely. This is the first five. There is another one that's sort of in similar binding and it's the next five, but I, for some reason they're really, really expensive. They're like 80 quid and I am on the lookout for it because I'd love to have them sitting on my shelf together. They've got really nice spines. And I love the emerald green on the edge of the pages as well. Another thing that I really love about this particular binding as well is it does have all of the original illustrations in it. And that's something I actually found really hard to get. I don't know if it's a UK thing, but generally the books of The Wizard of Oz, they have updated illustrations and I do not like them. Moving on from that, I obviously have the book of Wicked as well. I think reading the book of Wicked, I discovered it through the musical, as I'm sure most people who like Wicked did. And then I was inspired to read the book and it was through reading the book that really developed my understanding of what was going on and sort of developed characters in my mind and things like that. I really really love this book. It does have its issues. It feels a bit clunky in parts. It took me a while to read it because I'm just gonna like a huge spoiler. When Fiero dies, Elphaba goes into this period of mourning and it's really sad but it's sort of like the whole thing grinds to a halt and that was the issue I had with this book. It's quite a long section of the book and I just found that bit a bit boring but it does pick up again afterwards and the section where Fiero dies is like absolutely heartbreaking so I do really really love this book. It's really good. It's very political as well. I don't think people necessarily expect that. I got this copy second hand. I didn't want one that had the, generally this book has a tie into the musical and I didn't actually want that one so um, I got this one and it's got the green. I don't know if it ever came with a dust jacket. I know Gregory Maguire has written other books in the Wicked series but this is the only one that I've read because, spoiler alert again, but Alphaba dies at the end of this and I'm just not interested in like her son and all of the other characters that are in it so this is the only book that I have read. If you recommend the other ones like if you think no no they are actually really good then please do tell me but I really really love this book it's one of my all-time favorites but I haven't read any of the others I do admit that. 
obviously any Wicked fan owns the Grimmery. I didn't actually buy this at the show. There are quite a few things that I just sort of refuse to buy from the merch stand because they're ridiculously jacked up prices. You can get things like this on Amazon for quite a bit cheaper and they are brand new as well. This is a really beautiful book. It's like padded hardback and it's full colour pages and it just gives you... Oh, Got my ticket in there as well. That's the first time I ever saw Wicked. 20th of September 2010. So I've just got that in there. But it's got like the script and just various sort of backstage information, photographs, things like that. I haven't read it cover to cover, but it's just something I enjoy dipping in and out of now and then. This one is my favourite. It's the pop-up compendium. It has some really beautiful illustrations in. It just goes through the story of Wicked as it's told in the musical. It is quite different in the musical to how it is in the book, which, you know, there's some things I like about that, some things that I don't. I feel like some of the characters are a bit too reduced. Like Fiero, for example, he doesn't really get much stage time and development on stage, but he's a really major part of the book. That's sort of like really my only gripe with it, but it is still a really good adaptation and I really love this book. It's all pop up and you can see Linda coming down in her bubble. We've got a uh, She's a University Gazette, The Emerald City. This page is like wow. <laughs> and the flying monkeys. It's just something that's really fun and obviously a collectible as well. Next to all of my programs, I don't collect programs for like every time that I see Wicked because I do actually see it quite a lot and if it's the same cast with the same program, I just don't see the point in getting like doubles of things that I earn. So I've got three of these. Generally in UK theatre, we do it so like you have your program that has like all of the cast information and crew information and things like that and then you buy a separate brochure if you want like production photos and it can work out kind of expensive it's not like in the US where you get a free playbill you we actually have to pay for our programs and so I really like how Wicked do it where it's got like a program and a brochure all in one so you've got the cast information in here as well as all of the production photos and I just think that's a much nicer way of doing things I do have a playbill of when I saw it in America I saw it at the Gershwin Theatre when I went to New York last year it felt really important to me because it is my favorite musical it felt really important to sort of see it in the theatre where it originally opened so that was a really special experience and as you can see I got it signed and I met some of the cast. This is the brochure from when I saw it in New York and it's sort of almost like an update to the Grimmery. It's not necessarily about the cast that I saw. When you read the Grimmery it's more the original cast and sort of early cast of Wicked so this is like a bit more up to date. I <laughs> collected the uh, leaflets as well. I actually ordered this one online it's the 15th anniversary program. Because I hadn't seen it on New York yet I didn't really know what I was getting with this but I wanted to order something else in a US online shop so I decided to throw this in as it was around the time of the 15th anniversary and actually the exact same interior as this so it has obviously got the special cover though so that's something at least. This is perhaps one of the rarer things that I own it's like the press kit for when it opened in London and it looks obviously like a book and then you open it up and it's got production photos from the US production and then it's just got a DVD about Wicked. I have watched it, it's sort of like an interview with Stephen Schwartz and members of the crew and stuff about creating the musical and it just shows trailers and things as well. It's like 15 minutes long or something. So I assume that these were given out on the press night. I don't know, I'm not an expert on that kind of thing, but it's just a cool little collectible. I own the vinyl record of the soundtrack as well. I was kind of underwhelmed when I got this. In the Apollo Victoria, they, they sell this for like 50 quid. It is not worth 50 quid. I paid 20 for it on Amazon. And I, I feel like even that was quite a lot to be honest. Considering it's a double record, it's like it's not a gatefold, they're just both squeezed in there. And the actual sleeves are completely plain. It's not even on like green vinyl or anything, it's just your plain black. You do get a lyric sheet, big deal. I just feel like they could have done a heck of a lot more with this. It's kind of plain, it's got a couple of production photos, but like they could have covered this in production photos or had like a huge one on each side. They could have had like a nice gatefold sleeve. Like I say, they could have done like green vinyl or something and I don't know, I don't know if I'm just being picky because I used to collect vinyl so I sort of, it didn't meet my expectations. Maybe if you're not a vinyl collector you'd be happy with this, but I'm glad I didn't pay 50 quid or I would be livid. 
Obviously I kept my cup when I saw it on Broadway. They give these out, I think this is like a normal thing for like every production because I got one for every show that I saw on Broadway. It's a really nice way of doing things. We don't have this in the UK. Whenever you buy a drink, you get this souvenir cup and then you can just get the souvenir cup refilled for a cheaper price than obviously buying a full drink. And yeah, it's just like a little sippy cup and I just, I just really like that. I've also got my flask, which I've still got my drinking because I do use this a lot as you can tell by like some of the paints coming off of it and stuff um, and it just says so have another drink of green elixir and we'll have ourselves a little mixer and it's a H2 go so it's quite a good flask it did cost me quite a lot I think I paid like 30 quid for this which is a bit obscene but I use it every single day and I've had it for like a year now when I got this I got it direct from the theatre and I've never seen them since so I don't know if it was just a short period of time they sold it but I'm really pleased I got it I also have my little London mug. It's all dusty because it's not something that I actually use. It just sits on my shelf. I feel like I kind of lost what I'm doing stuff in so I'm going to show you all of the Wizard of Oz stuff that I've got now and then I'll go back to like all of the Wicked stuff. One thing that I do have of the movie is this vintage cut out of Judy Garland as Dorothy. I got this on eBay. I have no idea as to its origin but it is like really really old. I had hoped that I could like put it up on my shelf but it's just that bit too big unfortunately. I'm not a Funko Pop collector but I do own the Funko Pops of Scarecrow and the Lion. I do want to get the Tin Man eventually but these are really really expensive. I bought these second hand, they were out of their box which is why I managed to get them quite cheaply but I've seen the Tin Man go for like a hundred quid, it's obscene and you can get knockoffs of them but I don't really want that. I don't like human Funko Pops, I think they're just kind of weird looking so like I won't collect Dorothy or the Wicked Witch or anything like that but I quite wanted like the main three characters and I can't find the Tin Man and it is a bit of a shame but I do have these two. I also have a little cuddly toy of the Scarecrow. The Scarecrow is probably my favourite out of the three. I am kind of because of Fiera, I'm not gonna lie. Also, he was my favourite even before. I just think he's like a really sweet character in the film and in the book as well and yeah. So I only have the cuddly toy of him and he's the only cuddly toy I want. I also have this necklace of the Wizard of Oz. It's like a miniature book. I did get this custom made off of a seller on Etsy. She makes different book covers for necklaces. It's like a sort of library shop thing. <laughs> and she didn't have any for the Wizard of Oz. So I sent her the cover and asked if she could make one and she did. And I love this necklace. I really wear it a lot. I think that's all of my Wizard of Oz stuff. So I'll go back to the Wicked. Uh, I have these two magnets, hold them the right way up. I collect magnets sort of only fairly recently in like the last two, three years. I decided it was a fun thing to, you know, it's just like a small thing I can get for everywhere I go because I like traveling as well as seeing shows and stuff. They're just like a cheap little inexpensive souvenir, of course, and I like being able to see everything put together on like my refrigerator and stuff. I have the one for London and I have the one for New York. I have a couple of official pins. I have this Defy Gravity one, which I got when I saw it on Broadway, and I have this logo pin as well. I've had so many of this. They keep falling off my bag. I don't know why. I have so many pins on my bag and I have these sort of special backs that go on them so that the pins don't fall off. None of my other pins fall off except my Wicked one. I think I've bought probably about eight of these. I generally don't collect cuddly toys but I saw this on eBay and it's the only one I've ever seen and I just thought it was really cute and it's the Time Dragon. It's actually a hand puppet. I just thought that was something a bit different. I really like the concept of the Time Dragon and it gets overlooked a lot, so I liked that. If you can excuse a bit of self-promo, I feel like this does fit because it is Wicked themed, but I've actually made myself, I'm a professional illustrator, you can see some art videos on my channel, and I've made these little Wicked themed key rings. They're available in my Etsy shop, I will leave a link. But obviously I own some as well, so I do consider them part of my collection, even though they're just something that I made. There are five designs in total. There are Elphaba and Glinda by themselves, Fiero by himself, and then there's one of Fiero and Elphaba together, and then there's one of Elphaba and Glinda together. So hopefully that covers everybody. I am actually in the process of manufacturing some enamel pins as well of the design of Elphaba and Fiero together, and I'm really excited for how they're going to come out from the pictures I've seen and stuff then I think they're going to be good. 
I'll give a proper announcement on like Twitter or something for when they're actually going to be uploading to my shop. I don't have them yet. Talking of things I've made, I also have this necklace which I made myself because I have the Wizard of Oz one, I wanted one that was also just wicked. So I have the musical tie-in of the book cover because I felt then that sort of covers both. And then it's just got a charm of a scarecrow and a witch's hat. Also, I forgot to mention my dress. I'm not doing very well in the order of this video. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like fully out of practice for making videos. But my dress is Wizard of Oz themed as well. It's by a Japanese brand called Emily Temple Cute and it's just got different scenes from the Wizard of Oz on it. It's one of my favourite things to wear as well because it's like elasticated, it is so comfortable. But yeah, it's got different scenes of like the meeting Glinda, of the Emerald City and the Olympic Road, of the Wicked Witch of the West, of the Silver Slippers and yeah, I just really like the arc on it and it's something that I wear all the time because it's my probably my favourite dress. Some more clothes that I own are, I have this Wicked t-shirt that obviously I bought when I saw the show. I don't wear it very often because I'm not much of a t-shirt kind of person but I like that it's sort of like an oil slick and it's very very soft and this is more my kind of thing and it is something that I do wear fairly frequently and it is a dress made out of jersey fabric but it's like double layered and it's just really really comfortable really really flattering because it's like that skater style and I somehow forgot to film this even though it's something that I wear all the time so please excuse the voiceover but I also have this jacket which I got at the theatre as well and lastly is my throw. I've no idea how I'm going to show this. I said about how I'd ordered the 15th anniversary brochure because I was ordering from the US web shop. And what I was ordering from the US web shop was this throw. It's like sort of single twin bed size. And <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to show this. It's got Elphaba and Glinda in a field of poppies. It was released for the 15th anniversary. It's really nicely made. I love all of the colours on it. It feels almost like sort of a tapestry or something and it does look nice on my bed but it's something that when I eventually have space I'd like to sort of properly hang it up somewhere. I think it would look really nice on a wall sort of like one of those old tapestries that they had in like the old days. So that's everything I think. <laughs> I keep looking around the room thinking like oh is there anything else I've forgotten but I'm pretty sure that's everything. I feel like this video is a little bit out of left field, so I hope that you enjoyed seeing it nonetheless, because like I say, this is something that is really important to me, and I'm gonna post some other collection videos as well, and I'm just gonna share my collections that are important to me, and I just thought it'd be a good little getting to know me kind of video, because you can see what's important to me. But yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.